All right. Hey, good afternoon, folks. Once again, we are back taking a look at the tropics. Today is Wednesday, July 16th, 2025. This is your afternoon update. Still tracking Invest 93L moving across the I-10 corridor there in western Florida. Just made it offshore here this afternoon, kind of near Panama City. Our center of circulation somewhere here, probably just offshore if we had to guess. And our system is generally drifting to the west, kind of west-southwest. And looks like at this point it's on a collision course for southeast Louisiana. Louisiana, with a landfall expected in about 24 hours, giving it pretty limited time to get itself going and organized into a tropical depression or even possibly a tropical storm before landfall. So overall, haven't observed too many changes today with 94L. Hurricane Center still pegs us as a 40% chance of development. Uh, they really haven't changed their numbers, and it's kind of the same story. You know, could develop tomorrow, heavy rainfall, flash flooding. Those are the things we're going to talk about in today's video. Looking at the scatter plot and surface plots here on um, Tropical Tidbits, they are showing that low pressure center, I mean, just offshore now of Florida, kind of drifted through Tallahassee and Apalachicola today and has now moved off like this. And again, kind of losing just a little bit of latitude and should skirt just south of Alabama and Mississippi's coast and move in near New Orleans or south of New Orleans over the period through tomorrow. So that's kind of been the most reliable surface visibility you know, we have right here. Looking at satellite presentation here this afternoon, again on Tropical Tidbits, definitely seeing a lot of uh, thunderstorm activity here on the Gulf Coast. I'm in Biloxi, and we are kind of getting rained on as I speak. A lot of thunder and uh, heavy rain associated with some of the uh, storm bands ahead of 93L's main center. Uh, and again here, the, the center of circulation, best guess, would be somewhere like right about here. Uh, interesting to note that it's kind of more of a trough axis at the moment. If you had to draw it, it would look something like this because you have these pretty strong winds here on the east side of the storm, and you've got some pretty good winds down ahead of it, but if you look up under the storm, up under the hood, and in, in this uh, through the canopy of high clouds, you can see that there's virtually no like relative westerlies with this storm. In fact, there might actually be winds going back this way a little bit. So indicative that we don't have that fully closed center of circulation. We kind of have it in three parts. We have this nice band here along the coast, and then we just don't really have a whole lot. There could be a little bit under the under the hood here that we can't see on satellite, but even if you use like an NIR kind of loop, it's really hard to see here. I, I, I really would be surprised if we have a whole lot going on. Again, maybe a very weak center of circulation somewhere right here, but uh, I would be impressed if we had anything actually closed off right now. It looks like it's just a trough axis which would just be kind of what we've seen today, this trough of low pressure kind of moving west or east to west rather. So back to the visible satellite, you know, generally speaking, a lot of dry air and wind shear still going on, very dry kind of out behind it. And then you can see all the high clouds moving off to the left here, off to your screen uh, to the west, meaning that your shear vector is still out of the, the east to the northeast. So meaning that shear is still acting on the storm. In between that land interaction, it just really hasn't give, given this so storm much of a chance to get going and when we add the water vapor in on top of it as we kind of talked about we talked about on the facebook page a couple days ago that's a little crack of thunder out there um, we have this stifling ridge of high pressure over the southeast and it's kind of flattening as a cold front starts advancing on it from the upper midwest so we've got this ridge here that's rotating clockwise you can see the flow here very clearly kind of in this clockwise flow and this is not positioned very well if you'll notice that there's very little outflow with these thunderstorms you see a little bit of upper winds escaping this way but that's kind of a very inefficient outflow channel there really isn't much outflow to the south because of this upper low it's kind of pulling everything away like this and then you have uh no outflow to the north because everything is getting crushed by this high pressure so the storm really can't breathe and uh, as we talked about you know on the page between that and having lacking surface convergence here in the gulf this just really never had a chance to do a whole lot it was just never going to be very strong given this synoptic setup so not surprising that 93l is struggling a good bit today but struggling does not mean it's still can't produce some impacts. If we go here on the European model, we'll show you kind of how this plays out. Euro's got a pretty good hold on it. We can see that trough axis. We see the winds on three sides, but we don't have that backside rotation. Euro sees the storm structure pretty well here today with that center just offshore of Florida right now. 
I like the Euro initialization a lot here. It continues that wave axis for the next six hours. And then as it moves towards Louisiana, as we go into tomorrow morning, this is 12Z on Thursday or about 7 a.m. Eastern time. You can see here, this is where the Euro thinks that it might have an opportunity to strengthen a little bit. You can see here, it develops this tighter envelope of winds and kind of establishes a bit more of a circulation center. The winds are only about 20 to 25 knots, really 20 knots. So it would be dubious to say if this actually would organized enough to be a tropical depression it could this will be the window this will be the time if it's going to wouldn't hold my breath and honestly it doesn't change hardly anything in terms of impacts yeah a few of these coastal parishes might get a few stronger wind gusts generally speaking this is going to be rain rain and rain uh, our intensity models and track models kind of showed up here again from tropical tidbits you see it's going to be over water for the next about 24 hours tops and again that sets window for any intensity increases are going to be earned tomorrow morning and early tomorrow afternoon before it moves in but uh, pretty good agreement there and intensity models uniformly pretty much not showing this get to tropical storm intensity but a few of them get close and that's enough to at least you know wonder uh, if maybe it's going to have a chance. But again, when you're looking at these, make sure you look at the right ones. Some of these are like showing it doing something crazy after 96 hours. It will be well on shore by this point. So we're pretty much looking like right here for any intensity, you know, before landfall. This is a 24 hour. So again, most of the models not showing that tropical, all of them uniformly not showing tropical storm intensity. Um, but, you know, a few of them get to 25 or 30, which with enough organization could get you TD if the hurricane center kind of squints a little bit. So, again, rainfall, rainfall, rainfall is going to be the big threat here. This is the five-day forecast from the Weather Prediction Center. This ends Monday evening. So this is going to probably factor in some weekend thunderstorm rain, not exactly associated with 93L. But it gives you a good idea of the rainfall still to come, officially from the WPC, two to four inches for much of the Mississippi and Alabama Gulf Coast. And again, in these tropical downpours that we talk about, you can get double or sometimes even a little bit more than double what you see on this broad brush generalized map. Like right now, it is pouring outside. It's been pouring out towards Pascagoula. They may have gotten two inches of rain just since, you know, I've started working on this video this afternoon. So, you know, but that's not every backyard. That's not every neighborhood. It's just kind of the sporadic nature of tropical rainfall, especially when it's mixing with kind of non-tropical air. You get these downdrafts and strong thunderstorms that come out of it. You're going to get rainfall totals that are going to vary quite a bit. So when we say two to four, you know, if your neighborhood gets five or six, the one down the street may only get three and, may, and they down the road from them may only get one. It's just kind of the nature of the beast. And you can see a lot of heavy rainfall again, still to come for Southeast Louisiana. This is where the highest risk for flash flooding is going to be from the weather prediction center through the weekend. You can see here day one, that's going to be through today and tonight, slight risk in Southeast Louisiana, marginal elsewhere. We get a slight risk from pretty much Panama from uh, Pensacola, rather all the way over to the border of Louisiana and Texas tomorrow and this is really the i-10 corridor in just north and south of that um, pretty much south of that if you're in louisiana and kind of right along that i-10 corridor for mississippi alabama and pensacola and that kind of continues through day three where that moderate risk gets introduced so this is kind of already assuming two days of heavy rain are going to fall so that means by friday as the core of the system moves into louisiana some even heavier rain and even uh, more risk for flash flooding is going to introduce itself as water drainage systems get full, soil gets waterlogged. These flash flood risks are not just based on rainfall totals. They are based on soil's ability to absorb, drainage systems, all the other things that go into the potential for flash flooding. So the WPC continues to think that southern, southwest Louisiana, that's kind of like Lake Charles, Morgan City, kind of intercoastal city sort of areas could be under a greater threat for heavy rainfall and flash flooding than they saw Thursday more so on Friday. And that kind of continues loosely through the weekend with that marginal risk on Saturday. And then it kind of relaxes on Sunday as everything kind of begins to move northward into that Ohio Valley. I can show you some other rainfall totals. Um, National Digital Forecast Database goes out to Saturday morning, two to four inches Mississippi Gulf Coast, four to six inches for Louisiana, widespread. Again, some folks could get higher. National Blend of Models, very similar stories. So WPC, NDFD, and NBM all kind of telling the same stories, which honestly, NDFD, NBM are what they're going to 
lean on for those product products. So this is probably the best, most most reliable forecast. And you're going to notice these are a little bit higher than some of the regional computer models like GFS Euro uh, that continue to undershoot the system a little bit. The human forecasters are kind of adding some rainfall on top based on the observations that we're seeing already. I think it's a good call. I think it's going to produce a lot of rain, especially considering the fact that it's going to stay loosely organized, which can actually help enhance rainfall totals area wide versus concentrating that rainfall in just a few locations. So don't um, don't conflate the fact that it may not get named with, oh, well, it won't be strong or it won't be something like that. Uh, winds are going to be a big concern. This is the NAM 3K model. Shows you a lot of 25 or so mile an hour wind gusts, maybe some low 30s, mid 30s down in southeast Louisiana, you know, a sporadic gust that could reach 40, maybe just around the coast. Wouldn't be utterly shocked to see a few of those, but um, wouldn't be anticipating winds being a widespread issue. This will be isolated power outages and a few tree branches down, things like that, but um, not expecting a whole lot in terms of that. HRRR that goes out to. Friday afternoon, kind of showing the same thing. A few higher gusts, probably showing that in thunderstorm downdrafts, and then generally 25 to 30 miles per hour elsewhere. Pretty much the same story. Not going to be a huge wind maker, not going to be a big surge maker. You'll see coastal flooding in the areas that typically have it, but uh, no widespread coastal flooding with this one, most likely. Again, big threat is just going to be freshwater flooding from all the heavy rainfall that is forecast to fall over the next several days. That's pretty much what I got for you guys on your tropical update. I don't really have much else on 93L. That's just what it's going to be. It's going to be a lot of heavy rainfall for the next couple of days. We will probably roll one more video tomorrow afternoon. Hurricane hunters will probably actually get out there tomorrow. Uh, they don't have far to go since they're leaving from Biloxi, which is uh, pretty much right here. So not like they'll have to fly very far. They can pretty much just uh, you know walk out the back porch and see what's going on. But uh, we'll have one more video tomorrow. We'll see what recon finds, if there's anything unusual out there that gives a little more credibility. Otherwise, guys, the tropics are going to be quiet. So we'll take one more look at 93L tomorrow, and then we will be back next time there is a threat. So until then, thanks for watching, and have a good one.